This video will show a laboratory installation of heat shrinkable splices for 35 kV extruded dielectric power cables. Complete written instructions are included with each kit. Be sure to read and follow these instructions carefully before installing. You will need the proper cable preparation tools and a clean burning propane gas torch. For your own safety, please pay attention to the following precautions before beginning the installation. Failure to follow these warnings could result in injuries caused by fire, explosion, or electrical hazard. First, make sure the area you are working in has good ventilation. Check all torch connections for leaks before lighting. This product is covered by a material safety data sheet. Before installing any electrical accessory, read and follow the safety requirements and the written instructions. In addition, be sure to follow the safety instructions established by your own organization. The laboratory demonstration that follows is not intended to represent field installation conditions or your specific safety procedures. In this program, we will be splicing two 35 kV copper tape shielded cables together. Installation for wire shield, concentric neutral, and lead jacketed cables is similar. To begin the installation, first select the appropriate splice kit and prepare the cables as outlined in the written instructions. Then abrade and clean the insulation and cable jacket using an oil-free solvent. Next, place the nested tubes over a clean cable end and install the connector. While standard connectors are acceptable, Raychem recommends the use of rounded or tapered connectors. Once the connector is in place, deburr the connector and clean it and the insulation with an oil-free solvent. Now cut a one quarter inch chamfer on the ends of the insulation with a cable prep knife. You are now ready to install the stress relief material or SRM. First, remove one side of the protective paper from the long strip of SRM. Then roll the SRM up with the paper facing out. This makes it easier to apply and prevents the material from sticking to itself. Now, begin wrapping the SRM between the connector and the insulation. As you wrap, Keep the SRM stretched to one half of its original width. Be sure that you fill in the gaps on both sides of the connector. Continue wrapping the SRM around the connector until it is slightly larger than the outside diameter of the insulation. On your final pass, wrap the SRM over the chamfer so it is level with the surface of the insulation. Then tear off any excess. For non-chamfered splices, simply overlap the SRM for one quarter of an inch onto the insulation. If the connector diameter is greater than the insulation diameter, wrap two layers of SRM over the connector. Next, you will apply the diagonally cut SRM at the edges of the semicon cutback. To do this, Lay the point of the SRM on the insulation and against the edge of the semicon cutback. Then, stretch the SRM to one half of its original width and wrap it until it is the same thickness as the semicon. Overlap and taper the SRM onto both the insulation and the semicon by one quarter of an inch. Discard the excess SRM. After the SRM is correctly applied, slide the black stress control tube over the center of the connector. Then, using an appropriate torch, adjust the flame until it is about 12 inches long. Use the outer 3 to 4 inch tip of this flame to heat the tube. Beginning at the center portion, 
work the torch around the circumference of the tube with a smooth brushing motion. Be sure to heat the entire circumference, including the underside and the back. When the center of the tube has shrunk, slowly begin moving the torch to one end of the tube while holding it at a 45 degree angle. This preheats the tube and forces air out of it to assure a smooth, void-free interface. Once you reach the end of the tube, move the torch to a 90 degree angle and make sure that the tube has shrunk smoothly and has a uniform wall thickness. Repeat this procedure for the other end of the tube. Next, post heat the entire tube until it has a smooth surface. This indicates that the SRM is adequately softened. If the black tube has cooled before you install the red insulating tube, begin by reheating the black tube. Remember, when installing multiple layers of tubing, the previous layer should still be warm before positioning and shrinking the next layer. Now, slide the red insulating tube over the black tube. The red tube is used to help increase the insulation thickness of the splice. When the red tube is centered over the splice, use the same shrinking technique that was used on the black tube. Again, begin at the center and work towards first one end, then the other. Continue heating this tube until it has a smooth surface and a uniform wall thickness. Next, apply the red sealant to the splice. This sealant will prevent moisture from entering the splice through a damaged cable jacket outside the splice area.